Jamaica, a jewel of the Caribbean. Our 1,022 kilometers coastline is adorned with harbors, bays, pristine beaches, mangrove swamps, and coral reefs. The name Jamaica, derived from the Taino word Jamaica, means land of wood and water. How fitting for a paradise where beauty flows from lush mountains through crystal clear rivers to turquoise seas. Our marine space is 24 times our land area and we boast an array of endemic species, truly nature's masterpiece. Beautiful, isn't it? Jamaica is particularly vulnerable to the effects of marine pollution. United Nations Environment Programme in 2021 says, Global concern about plastic pollution of the natural environment is warranted as plastic debris is ubiquitous and poses a threat to biodiversity. In the marine environment, macro and microplastics have been reported in multiple environmental compartments surface waters, subsurface waters, sediments, the atmosphere, and biota. Plastics are toxic, you know, and so they impact the species that come in contact with them either by eating them, but they introduce toxins to the environment. And then large pieces of plastics, plastic bags, even plastic rope that we don't think about, cause entanglement. Um, large marine animals might try to consume the plastic and, and they get gut blockage. They literally, physically damage the animals. And we don't think about the plants enough, but organisms like mangroves are extremely damaged by plastics. Of the 800,000 tons of residential waste Jamaica generates annually, 20% is estimated to be plastics, according to the IDB. Plastics like these accumulate in marine environments and fragment into microscopic pieces or microplastics. We're coming back from a conference and driving along Palisado Street, and we looked out to our left. It must have been the day after rainfall because there was this thin film of plastic bottles, debris, just as far as the eye can see. I've never seen it that bad left, right, center, just covering the entire harbor. So plastic pollution has become a critical environmental issue across the island. It has been known to impact our marine and coastal ecosystems, the tourism industry, public health, and it also affects the livelihoods of persons who depend on these ecosystems for a source of living. Most recently, we've become very conscious of microplastics because when the material stays in the harbour, it fragments, it gets into small enough pieces to get into the food chain, you know? So the, the small things eat the plastics and larger fish will eat those smaller fish and you get bioaccumulation. By the time it gets to us, it's um, really at a level that can cause problems to humans. But what caused this problem in the first place? Once upon a time, plastic wasn't something that we used as often, and it started really growing in its use in around the 1950s because it's cheap, it's convenient. But the problem with plastic is that it never breaks down. And we have a lot of items that are single use because it's also convenient. And so while it doesn't make up the most significant portion of our waste, it looks like it does because it's the thing that stays in our environment the longest. We visited the Port Royal Marine Lab and Biodiversity Center, where we toured some of our mangroves and saw firsthand the issue of pollution. Taking a boat into the mangroves, we encountered the stark reality, garbage up close and personal. Right now, we're still in the paths of Refuge Key, and the sight of garbage strewn across the mangrove roots are not pretty. You can see food wrappers, 
plastic bottles and other debris which mar the natural beauty and inevitably will disrupt the ecosystem. Refuge Key is the largest mangrove key in the Kingston Harbour and by virtue of its location in the harbour, it is the recipient of most of the city's garbage. There are about 23 gullies that empty into the Kingston Harbour and a lot of it just ends up washing from the gullies, drifting across the harbour and depositing itself on Refuge Key. The situation is dire. According to a 2020 study from Ocean Protect, plastic debris has increased by 30% in our waters over the last decade, posing a significant threat to marine life. Plastics, mainly single use, enter the oceans from both land and sea sources, including rainwater runoff, industrial disposal methods, and ships. Marine organisms are attracted to plastics. None of us will be around when the plastic that we have consumed has biodegraded. There's no economic model for us to store plastic for 450 years. Beyond that, if one thinks of where two of our larger um, landfills are, they're along the coast. So any issues with plastic or wind damage, etc., can move that waste into, into the harbors. If you take a drive along the Kingston Harbor, after any shower of rain, you will see plastics floating in the harbor. It's, a, it's very unsightly and very unfortunate. Let's, well, let's contemplate what it really does. First thing it does is it washes up against your mangroves and can starve the mangrove roots from the oxygen that they need. As with other waste, but certainly plastic because it, will, it won't biodegrade, so it starves them from the oxygen that they need far too long. That's one. The other, the other um, contemplation is that because of the harshness of salt water and heat, etc., plastic doesn't biodegrade, but it does break up into compartments. It then can become food for marine animals specifically fish that we consume, um, that is causing significant issues. What we find is that when garbage is improperly disposed or, um, well, yeah, if it's improperly disposed largely, it tends to wash down onto the coastline through the gullies, the waterways and so forth. And we end up having all of this plastic waste accumulate on our beaches, which then oftentimes get washed into the marine environment. We have organisms that mistake plastic bags, for example, for jellyfish. They eat it. Um, birds tend to eat plastic accidentally, thinking that they're small fish, for example. And so it is becoming more and more a massive um, major problem, not just for the environment, but for marine life, for our fisheries sector and so forth. Solid waste can smother and compact our wetlands. This was the case at Gallus Point along our Palisades Port Royal Protected Area. When this happens, it inadvertently affects the livelihoods of our fisher folks, which depends on these ecosystems to supply a constant source of fish. We're here in Raytown, a Kingston coastal neighborhood that suffers from the wave of plastic pollution that makes its way into the Kingston Harbor. The fishermen here, they depend on a healthy environment, but they have first-hand experience of what's happening in our waters. Yeah, but they're not on the sea. And more time than them take up the engine, take them up and mash up the engine. Engine put mash ups. They have to fish them, they fish them jolly. Can't catch nothing. Because the water gets polluted. Another example of plastic pollution in our waters is Kingston Harbor. Kingston Harbor is the seventh busiest port in the Americas and the busiest city port in the Caribbean. According to the Clean Currents Coalition, over 1,150 species of marine life is found within Kingston Harbor and its mangroves. The Kingston Harbor is connected to the entire city of Kingston, which means the 11 most populated drain canals or gullies feed into the harbor. Especially in Kingston Harbor, where the mangroves line the south shore of the harbor, they come in contact with the debris that comes from the gullies. And so the mangroves can be suffocated, literally. And then the forest is blocked from the, the flow of water that it needs to, to be healthy. There are other effects that we should be mindful of because they have economic impact. 
There can be so much debris in Kingston Harbour sometimes that it impedes boat traffic. It entangles propellers. Fishers have difficulty with their nets and their fishing activity. And so it's a, it's a broad spectrum of activities. We've seen the problem. We've heard from our experts. Now it's time to find solutions. Can we break free from our dependence on single-use plastics? Can we heal our broken blue and restore health to our marine ecosystems? The other major effort the government would have undertaken starting in January 1, 2019, that's when it became effect. I mean, the work would have started in 2016, was the first phases of a targeted plastic bag targeting certain um, single-use plastic items. Um, that was plastic bags, styrofoam containers, and plastic straws. One person said, well, why don't you ban all plastic? And I said, well, all plastics aren't created equally, unfortunately. Um, all plastics are non-biodegradable, but some are recyclable and some are not. Some have particular levels of carcinogens which make them more deleterious to human health than others. Plastic bottles are recyclable and unfortunately there is not sufficient glass alternatives at the prices that our market could manage. So it doesn't leave us with the genuine option to ban a plastic bottle, that's just not on the table. I mean, we wish it was, but it, it's not. It's not a genuine option for Jamaica or for most of the developing world. But items like plastic bags and styrofoam and plastic straws and the plastic lunchbox containers that we're taking a look at now are indeed, they're bannable because there are recyclable and biodegradable alternatives for each of the other items that we will target. One of the main ways in which Nepal protects our marine environment from pollution is through the Natural Resource and Conservation Authority Act. Uh, this is the overarching act that we use to implement a lot of the regulations that would directly impact the environment. For example, the license and permits regulation. Uh, through that framework, we identify industries that are likely to cause pollution to the environment and implement monitoring frameworks and specific requirements based on the industry to mitigate the ways in which they would contribute to the environment and for them to put in programs to reduce the pathways in which it directly enters the environment. Our CARE project, which stands for Kingston Harbour Eco Restoration Initiative, addresses the plastic pollution problem specifically on Kingston Harbour, both downstream and upstream. So downstream, we've built this pontoon, which we can take out on the water. Some people may have seen it on our Instagram page, and it's basically a floating platform which we can haul garbage out of the harbour and store on to take back to shore. What we started back then was doing these community um, cleanups. Then that translated to beach cleanups. And we realized that while they were important, you know, they were like the last um, defense, you know, the last thing you could do before the, the waste enters into the marine environment. It wasn't actually solving the problem. And so we said, well, okay, what are some of the other issues? And this evolved. Um, morphed into what you might now know as Nodotty of Jamaica. The idea is to stop the solid waste um, and plastics from entering Kingston Harbour using barriers. Um, the technology is primarily from the ocean cleanup. Grace Kennedy and its partners are the local um, operators. They manage the project. They also deal, provide technology to deal with how to sort what to do with the plastic once it's collected by these barriers. And so the, the effort really now over since yeah, about February 2022 to March 2024, they have removed 1.5 um, million tons of plastic. So what's next? We all have a part to play in preserving Jamaica's rich marine environments. It really depends on where you are financially as well. Not everybody is able to buy in bulk. Not everybody is able to um, buy the organic um, or the paper products because sometimes those are more expensive. But these are things that if you can afford, you should be considering. So buying in bulk. So instead of say, let's say you need to buy water. Instead of buying um, multiple of these small bottles, you buy a five gallon or bigger 
or you know there are there are different ways one of the main ways i tell people they can contribute to environmental betterment every single day is bringing your own reusables. I said it before, it seems very simple, but it's the one thing we have control of, right? So if, you're know, if you know you're going to have lunch today, take lunch from home, carry it in a container. If you have to buy it on the road, bring your own fork from home so you don't have to take that single-use plastic fork. It seems like using that fork in the moment is nothing, but not using it over a period of time makes such a big, big difference. So I have, I'm going to bend. <laughs> I have my water bottle today. I don't have to buy single use plastic water bottles. A lot of people buy juice bottles every day. So I would say that's the number one way we can improve as individuals because a lot of the plastic problem is not just on us. It's not just about Jamaicans littering and purchasing plastic. It's about the businesses who manufacture plastic and the governments who create policies. So it's a multi-stakeholder issue and that's the part that we can play. We can do that using collaborations with other agencies because plastic pollution is it's a people problem. So using entities such as NSWMA, who is responsible for the collection of our solid waste um, or private sector partnerships, what we need to do is to just continue to work together to ensure that um, whereas NEPA will deal with like trade generated waste, um, we need NSWMA and our community stakeholders to deal with household generated waste. It's refuse, reuse, reduce, recycle. So refuse the use of plastics, reduce the amount of solid waste that we generate, reuse plastics so whenever possible or opt for reusable containers and of course recycle. You're leaving from your house you can carry filtered water. You don't need a plastic bottle of water having just left your house. Um, you're sending your child to school for the day, send them with a water cooler. Um, you can pack your lunch at home if you have the ability to warm it and store it at your, your workplace and carry back your container. Um, there's a level of consciousness that I think has to creep in in the micro and small decisions that humans make. Um, we think about it as this big problem, but with each time you consume, you contemplate, well, what's going to happen after I've consumed? And I think growing that consciousness in our early childhood sectors and primary sectors of education in particular will facilitate that cultural change that comes over decades. Individually, I think the first thing is we have to um, really own the problem. We have to accept that we are part of the problem and therefore we have to be part of the solution. And so I think it begins with attitude change. Um, persons need to begin to see how they can minimize the volume of garbage in the waste stream. I think even the best waste management system, which we don't have, couldn't possibly handle the, the volume of garbage that we're putting into. So individuals need to see how they can sort, how they can minimize, use less plastics. We become addicted to plastics. The future of this paradise rests in our hands. Will the next generation only know Jamaica through stories and faded photographs? Or can we work together to ensure the broken blue is not the color of their memories, but a symbol of hope a reminder that we fought to heal the very lifeblood of our island nation. Together, we can restore our broken blue.